But at your first award ceremony we came to, we were robbed, <laughs> right? No, we, no, you can't do that. <laughs> well, I can. If, I'm taking this opportunity, Emily. This week, we're chatting to our good friend, Sam Savage, who, in my humble opinion, is the Liam Neeson. Yes, she has a unique set of skills of the wedding industry. There's nothing that girl cannot plan, and we can't wait for you to meet her. Enjoy. Sam, thank you very much for joining us today on the Digital Circus Live. As we start at the very beginning every single week, we need to ask you one very important question, and that is, what is it that you are trying to achieve right now? Sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping through the night. It's um, overrated, Sam. We all know <laughs> sleep's overrated. It, okay. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's um, not. not well, in life. Though. Yes, in life. All business doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah. Uh, balance. Yeah. Good. A good overall balance. But um, with a two-year-old, it's a challenge. It, do you know what? Fair play, to, uh, fair play to anyone who does business with any kind of age children, be, be a toddler or a teenager. We haven't got teenagers yet, but it is a challenge. And I think there's a whole host of other things that people that always who, who may not have children take into consideration. The sleep thing is a massive, go back to that, it's a massive, massive thing. Because if you're already feeling fatigued and then you have the weight of the world of trying to run your business and get all those things on your to-do list that are done and the responsibility of a small human being alive for another day, that's a lot to take on. Yeah, I think um, normally uh, January, you know, come January, I'm like ready to go. I know, yeah, re- these are my goals and this is what I'm going to achieve this year. Um, and this year, for sure, um, there's been a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of illness in this house. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm going to say February is the new January. <laughs> <laughs> well, like Thursday's the new Friday, February's the new January. Yeah, exactly. In, in all seriousness, like, how does that impact you? You, you have, you, we've got a, an ill house at the moment, or have had an ill house this year how does that directly impact your, has it impacted your business over the last year since he was born probably yeah <laughs> I think um well obviously when he was born 2021 um COVID was in full swing so I hadn't done any weddings for at least a year um and then he was born and then I think a month after he was born I was back doing my first wedding and it kind of was crazy from then on really. Mm. So I think since he was born until now, I've just been (laughs) catching up, catching up, catching up and just going with it as much as I can and figuring it out along the way. Um, Just like anybody that runs their own business and uh, things that are thrown into the mix. So you just kind of get on with it and make the best of it. We find that. I mean, ours are still relatively young, 10, 8 and 6, and uh, obviously we're younger once upon a time. Um, And I I just remember kind of, you know, we're in that sort of small business world and there's, you know, the narrative that comes out about structure your time, time block, you know, don't hustle, don't work too hard, get the balance right. And I'm like, and I'm like, how? How? How, how because, you know, and, and this is not a woe is me story, but like, I just remember thinking, I, I, I can't, we can't, we can't drop it at any point, you know, yeah. we, yes, we made these choices, obviously, you know, with no issues and all the rest of it. But I just remember thinking, how do you time block? Not yes. that I actually want to time block. I've and now if you did, at- it wouldn't work because <laughs> you're not in control of it. Yeah. And I think that's the thing on one side, you've got all these things going uh, you know, make your goals and make this mm. happen. And then on the other side, have some balance, take some time off. <laughs> what shall I do? Well, I, you, you say each side, there's a third part that then goes, I need cowpole, I need yeah. feeding, I've pooed my pants, I've been sick on the floor, I want this. That's you know, just Alan. That's just yeah. me, not the kid. <laughs> you know, and there really, there really is, it really is. And the, 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 I say the narrative a minute ago, the narrative coming out is about slow down, take it gently, take it easy. And it's like, that doesn't feel right now that that is a choice, you know. And yeah. and in your world, you're working evenings, weekends, and everything else. And so that balance and that sleep, specifically, is really tricky to get right. Yeah, I think I've, um, especially January. I was really ill after Christmas um, with my asthma, which I haven't been for years, so no idea why that suddenly popped up. But everything's mm. going round, isn't it? And it just probably made it, it agitated it. Um, and then my son's been ill, so for me, um, you know, I am. A planner my my job is planning um so it is really hard to let that go and just um kind of go with the flow as much as you can but january definitely i've really had to go okay you know what i can't do any work right now it's just not possible um yeah. obviously i'm still emailing and stuff but just not as rigidly as i was before i would 
very much kind of get back to people very quickly. Um, and and you know what? It hasn't really changed anything. When I do email, people go, really sorry for the delay in getting back to you. My son's been ill. Oh, yeah, no problem. Of course, no one cares. I mean, they care, but they're not. Yeah, um, yeah. No one's, you know, they're no one's forgiving. going, well, we're, we're going to go and find someone else now because you took two days to reply to me. It's not it's not the end of the world. And I, yeah, I think that my personality is, um, you know, work, work, work and get back to people quickly. But actually it is okay not to be like that all the time. Um, And you do have to just let go. You you hit the nail on the head and we we were joking before we hit record on this about you being a planner. and like. So what, you mean Sam tried to plan our podcast episode (laughs) for us? Thanks, Sam. It was a very, we can talk about this. Like, no, Sam, we're not going to. We can do this. We can do that. We'll see where the wind takes you. uh, But if that is in your, basically in your blood, in your DNA, that's, how you are as a person and that's how you've you've kind of got that in your day-to-day working life as much as you can control that it must be very di- difficult to sit back when things like that don't so for example yeah you've got you've got your son and and that is a no that he's not a robot he will do what he wants when he wants at whatever time and you can't time block that situation but things like you know covid happened and we, just, we talked about that briefly a second ago all those things that are out of control does that stress you out when you can't have a, a handle on it I think it depends on the situation, um, but I'm probably the type of person that, say, for example, at a wedding, if something were to happen or go wrong, I would, I don't freak out about it at the time. I'll just get on, fix the problem, sort it out, whatever it is, fight the fire, not literally, mm. touch wood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn it, Colonel! <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Yet. Um, and, and then sort it out and then afterwards be like, oh my God, um, what a nightmare, you know, on my own. Um, but situations like COVID and things like that, you know, I think I probably like most of the world was in denial about COVID for a while going, oh, you know, we'll be back on, we'll be back to work in a few weeks. Um, And so was initially doing um, Zoom interviews with suppliers just to kind of keep everybody's momentum up and um, market, you know, stuff for their marketing. Um, And then after a few months, um, you know, after everyone else had already been in the garden, sipping on their cocktails um, in the sunshine, um, I was like, oh, I really missed the boat on that. Why didn't I do that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I should have also just sat down and, and done nothing. But I don't I don't think that is in my nature really to kind no. of do no, that. I, it's I, really hard. I don't think it is either. And that's what something I've always, because we've known you for many years now through the wedding industry from our previous lives and weddings as well. And what I've always admired about you is that you don't just take it for what it is right now. You want bigger and better and that you are that helping hand to so many other people as well. You're really, you're really resourceful, Sam. Thank <laughs> but, you. Well, I just, you, know, I, you know the question. Sorry, I'll no, let you I, I remember during COVID that you were going, okay, we can't do it. And you started organising online wedding fairs and things like that. And you were the the resource for st- suppliers who are struggling and giving them the support. And you know, you've gone and you've looked at larger scale events and just giving yourself that extra platform to help as many other people. You are very resourceful. What was your question? Alan? Right. So, you know, if we're discussing that we know Sam and from the back days of the wedding world, I'd just like to park the thought that at your first award ceremony we came to, we were robbed, <laughs> right? No, we, you can't do that. <laughs> well, I can. If, I'm taking this opportunity, Emily. No, We've don't. known Sam for nearly a decade. We were robbed at the Hampshire Wedding Supplier Awards when a company from Dorset <laughs> won the award, right? I want I it out, even, Sam. Is it awful that I can't remember who won? It, no, of well, course that, it's they, not They awful. were the bar company that your family are uh, yeah, associated it was with, the, actually. Yeah. And we were like... My family? <laughs> Well, that, right. We look. We don't. This is what you get told when you. Everyone's been drinking. So we went to two. Right. I've got a genuine question about where does this. Not one, that is bitter and it doesn't hold no, on no, to no, me. No, no, no. It's funny. I don't care. So at the first awards we came to, we didn't win, right? And we lo- yeah. at Hampshire Awards, and we lost to a bar company from Dorset, who we got told was loosely related to you, right? And we're like, oh, really? The no organisers' family? Yeah, but stuff this because that's what Emily and I like when we lose. We're bad losers and bad winners. <laughs> And in the next year, we did win because uh, we like lobbied you for like outdoor awards and things like this. Yes. And then I got abused at a table by someone. Do you remember that? I do. We won't mention that, but I, I'm like, what? oh. It's all I, coming I, out I, now, Alan. No, I know, but I'm like, I don't think I'd ever been publicly abused in this way. Basically, you let some wedding suppliers out into the um, into the general public when they're not on an event. They have a few glasses of vino they and they're all... Cave. No, they don't. Because when we're in the wedding world, it's very much, oh, so you're getting married. How lovely. Could I do this for you? You know, and it is. But as soon as the the clients aren't there and the beer's flowing. Anyway, sorry, Sam. I feel like Alan needs some therapy. 
Well, I've done it. I've vented. It's all good in the way. No, I don't really. It's mind. out. It's out. It's I've out. Um, and honestly, at this stage, it's more funny than anything else. Um, right, genuine. <laughs> I feel question. like you've been holding on to this for a while, so I'm glad you let it out. <laughs> Ten years, Sam. Ten years. Well, I can't believe I've never mentioned the 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 me Dorset. Too. Yeah, and that's I apparently have. related to me. Yeah. I also didn't know that. I think it may have been a friend of your sister, potentially, at the oh. table. Oh, so you remember. No, not at the table. The bar company was a friend. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Look, we've got a genuine... I've got a question. <laughs> okay. I want to yeah. know I where this... Co- <laughs> right, yeah. Where this where this planning, kind of doing... I like to know where it comes from, right? Has it always been there? Did something happen? You know, is it just you've always been like that? Um. That's a good question. I doubt. I don't think when I was younger, I don't think I was the planner in the family or anything. Now, obviously, everything gets left to me. Uh, it's just an unspoken thing that everyone leaves everything to me now. Um, but I don't think when I was younger, I was the planner. Um, and uh, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but I've got a very varied career history. Oh, um, tell us about that, it. Tell us about it. <laughs> so I started out in childcare crazy lady um years and years and years ago so I started working with children uh in a nursery I moved to Canada to be an uh, I was a nanny in Canada um so I guess maybe that's where the organizing started I had to organize other people's uh children and their activities um so you know (laughs) that's where it started uh if you can work with kids weddings are a breeze (laughs) Uh, (laughs) and then I um started working for a charity I had already volunteered there so I started working for a charity and um managed their volunteer program so they had a really big volunteer program um the local colleges and universities and general public would volunteer for the charity who worked with people with disabilities and we organized um evening acti- evening weekend activities for them bowling cinema trips blah 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 blah, blah all the rest um and so i managed all of the volunteers like recruited them evaluated them etc um and then started running the special events they didn't really have a lot of special events going on at the charity like halloween parties christmas parties um and i was like yeah yeah we should do that so th- there was obviously always something in me that um popped out one day and decided that that was <laughs> what we should do um and then it yeah it sort of snowballed from there really but um it's not like I then kind of jumped into planning um I came back from Canada not really knowing what I wanted to do um so I went and lived with my sister in Derbyshire for three months because they were moving to Germany and uh her husband went ahead of her for three months so I just got a temp job going oh I'll just you know do anything um Mm -hmm. and got a temp job at Balfour Beatty just doing admin and then my other sister was expecting a baby. So uh, I went to live with her for six months in Wales to kind of help her prepare. Um, and her mother-in-law is, uh, was a teacher um, and they were desperate for teaching assistants. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll come and be a teaching assistant. I've worked with the kids. The thing I struggled with initially was that I'd been living in Canada for eight years and going to uh, a school in Bridgend uh, where the, the the Welsh accent was, you know, quite prominent. Um, and the k- teenagers speak quite fast anyway, I think. Uh, a lot of the kids would speak to me and I would just look at them and have <laughs> no idea what they said. Um, it, it gradually got easier, but initially I was like, no, nope, no idea. Um, so I did that. And then I thought, oh, I probably should, you know, think about what I'm actually going to do for a career. Um, and so got a job at Julia's House Children's Hospice um, in their fundraising department. Um, and then after a few years, I started working for a marketing company. They uh, asked me like to go and work for them as an account manager. So I did that. And then just kind of, they were getting bought out by another, a bigger company and I didn't really want to go with them. Um, so I decided just to set up on my own. And it all kind of started from there really so yeah. I had a really roundabout way of getting to where I'm going where I was going <laughs> right so a couple of thoughts on that then so yeah. th- this plan apart because I have this image of you at like eight years old birthday party <laughs> with a clipboard going mummy I did not invite Violet to my party <laughs> she's not on the list well Violet so, was a knock so. Vi- yeah no one likes Violet <laughs> Um, so I had this image. So like you don't really know it just kind of started appearing. Um, and I always think anyone with a portfolio career 
you, you have to kind of understand what the motive was. The, was the driver you just wanted some money? Was the driver I'm just not quite sure what I want to do? Was that was 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 there something? And then eventually you hit this point where you go, no, I'm I'm going it in alone, you know. So w- what was the driver through those in, initial stages and phases? Well, no, I don't think it was money. I've I've never really been driven by money i mean obviously everyone needs it needs something yeah i meant i meant in a need it my... rather than lots of it as in i yeah. just need to earn an income yeah. yes yes yeah, it's, it's never been um the driving factor behind anything but yeah i think it was just more like what do i want to do and oh yeah no this is what i enjoy doing and um actually the wedding planning sort of happened by accident really is i had a, a kind of like a chance meeting um at a venue who was running marquee weddings and the coordinator was leaving and she said, oh, you could, do you want to take over the weddings? And I said, yeah, okay. Um, and it, it wasn't quite as simple as that, but almost. And and that's where that started. And, you know, I never thought, it was one of those things where you say, yes, I'll, I'll figure it out. Not to them, obviously, in my head. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> oh, of course, I'd love to manage your weddings for you. Oh, bl- it's, it's what do I do? You say yes and work it out later. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so it was kind of that. And um uh, and did that for um, I don't know how many, uh, maybe three years, um, and then the the uh, the venue where the the marquee weddings took place actually changed um, to a uh, the the use of the venue changed, so they couldn't have weddings anymore, um, and so that's when I then started doing it more independent wedding planning as opposed to kind of looking after a a venue. Nice. I. <laughs> I absolutely, I mean, I've been to many of your events and I think you really do have that Liam Neeson uh, unique set of skills. Da, da, da. <laughs> what do you know and take it? I have a unique set of skills. I mean, not that you're going to assassinate your brides and grooms, of course. You may feel like it sometimes. And again, having worked at weddings, I do feel that pain sometimes. Where are you going no with comment. this? <laughs> I'm talking about the, what, what I've always loved about you, having again, attended your events, is that you are probably one of the most likable people on this planet. I don't know whether you realise it or not, but people really do get drawn to you, Sam, in terms of the way you run, the, whether you, you have this almost sense of calm about you in the most stressful, strenuous of, of, of situations. We've been to another one of your uh, wedding fairs, your festival event that you do in Dorset. That's a big setup. Ultimately, you are dealing with not just people coming through the door. You've got infrastructure there. You've got needy supplies. You've got to make sure that the weather's going to be in your favour. You've got backup plans and everything that you do. Yet you do it with such gusto and kind of, yep, this is, I've got it in hand. And I don't know whether you can learn that Oh, that's that's just how you are. But you do now teach people how to do what you do, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, ha- I um very have always very much been stress on the inside sort of person, <laughs> which is you know maybe not the best. Um, but I remember even when I took my driving test um when I was eighteen, I guess. Um, my you know everyone's like, you're so calm, you're so calm. And mm. I'm like, I'm not. I just I guess I just don't show it. Um and obviously when in events that's what people want they want to look at you and know that there's someone that's calm and if she's okay we're all okay yeah um and I don't know if I've learned to kind of hide my stress I don't think I ever consciously thought right we need to hide the stress um but that's just the way I am (laughs) and so it's all internal and then but obviously everyone's got to have an outlet for their stress just not at the event or the wedding um (laughs) And then you, yeah, worry about it later. Um, but yes, I have um, the, my situation, I guess, in terms of having a child um, and later in life than some people um, and an established what, business. 25? <laughs> 25. 41, Emily. 41 when I had my son, um, which is obviously a lot later than some people. Um, and, it, you know, not through choice, but circumstances or whatever um that's what's happened um and then having an established business for like 10 years um and as we've talked about trying to kind of balance those has made me think about um adapting and evolving and you know moving things forward in a way that is actually going to provide some balance Mm -hmm. um in in my life our lives um so I have created uh Rise and Shine which is essentially um a membership for the wedding industry um which will provide support because um like you've already said I really like helping other people and I also love people I just 
I love people. Um, people always say, what's your favorite thing about weddings? And it's, it's just the people, um, which sounds weird, but I just love talking to people, hearing their stories. How did you get, like you guys, how did you get to where you are now? And what do you do for work? And what about this? And, you know, I can find myself talking to people about their, you know, their past and their history and their jobs before even, you know, an hour's gone by and like, right, we should probably talk about your wedding. Uh, but yeah. I do actually find that helps you, um, you know, get to know people and what they like and dislike. Yeah. So it really, yeah. when you're planning someone's wedding, it does help you get to know them. But also I am just really fascinated uh, by people. Sorry, went really off topic there. No, that's <laughs> fine. No, it's it's more on topic than you realise the people part. Because, oh, sorry, I'll let you finish and then I'll come back no, to no, that. No, 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 it's fine. Oh, right. Because surely then that's the bit that connected all those early jobs as you were moving around from fundraisers to children to marketing um, in, within the company to the, uh, the entry into the event manager part uh, for the wedding venue. That that It's the people element that's going to have connected them. We always say that. We still don't know what we want to do when we're older, but we know what we don't do, what don't want to do, and we know what we like. Yeah. You know, we like people, fun and adventures and things like that. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's also not just like the people and I I always say to everyone like it doesn't matter if you don't know what you want to do um every job you have or you know anything you're doing it's all skills that will be transferable you know yeah. for going forward when you do decide what you want to do you know when I was working with kids patience you know that's a massive <laughs> thing with kids um you know all these skills that you learn along your way and um, like me having a really varied um you know career history and and now all those skills that I've learned along the way has helped me, you know, with this job. So when people come to me and say, I really want to work in the wedding industry, I really want to be a wedding planner, I really want to do this, what shall I do? Um, and, you know, not it's really hard just to go, I'm going to be a wedding planner and just pop up and be a wedding planner. It's, it's not that easy. You have no. to you have to put the, the work in. Um, so I just say, like, go, go and get experience with any wedding supplier, cake maker, a florist, a caterer. And then see all these, you know, different sides to the wedding. And then eventually one day when you do become a coordinator or um, a planner, all that experience from seeing everything from all sides will help you go, oh, OK, I see how this all comes together now. And it's all all transferable skills, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. And I, th I think, again, having had that experience within the wedding industry as well, and you see it a mile off and we've all seen it and we all smile sweetly when you find that bride or that groom who has their wedding and then becomes a wedding planner directly because they've had the best day ever. Which is, you know, yeah. we had a wedding and started our wedding business. We are <laughs> one of those couples. I wasn't, I wasn't presuming to plan. We, we put tents up for a living. Um, but the it's that they've had the best experience ever with that one event, which hopefully did go exactly to the letter to plan, but that doesn't necessarily make you a long term. And this is what I've, we found with a few things we're doing right now. We're, we're still trying to test models and see what works and give us ourselves that experience for it to bed in because once could be lucky twice you know if, if, if you've got three to... times a lady um <laughs> but it's it is the exactly that is the giving yourself that time to get experience and it doesn't matter like i say if it's a cake maker or a florist but it's understanding those nuances mm. of things that could go wrong will go wrong uh what the detail is or that the the time coming into things the, the the lead in time for getting suppliers in all of those little details are important to make you very uh, better than what you are right now i think that like so we've got some friends who have um who have held down not held down. They've had the they've had the same job, you know, career path since they were very young. Oh, I can't and, imagine being able to do it. I, mean, well, I, 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 I always admire it. I always yeah. admire it. I couldn't do the same my job head for thirty would explode. years. Yeah. yeah, and you know, my my best mate Alan, he's uh, he's been a truck mechanic since yeah, he was Alan's seventeen. Alan's best mate Alan, you heard right. I was right. just going to say they Alan have the same Alan, name. Right. But complete chance, we met in Scouts. Al Alan B and it's, Alan C. Yeah, we, uh, he was... Um, Alan, where's Alan A? There is no Alan A. We don't a. know an Alan A. Alan A, if you're listening, come make it up. Complete the set. We found an Alan D once and we were out and about and we hung out with yeah, Alan, Alan D. Alan D. I know, we need an Alan A. Um, I might do that. That might be quick side story, right? So I connected with everyone called Alan Braithwaite on LinkedIn, right? I went down, found all the Alan Braithwaites and sent <laughs> them Because we weren't busy enough right now. Yeah, That's what we did with this so, afternoon. Yeah, but you've got to like do it because it makes me smile. No other reason, right? But now I'm like, I need the alphabet. 
I need to find the Allen A to the Allen Z and then try and get them in order. Right. Sorry, where was I? Right. So we've got these friends. We've got a handful of friends who have held down, you know, the similar career, same career. Yeah. And, as a, you know, we look at them enviable because like, wow, can you imagine actually? Be, and But the other part of us, as Emily just said, makes our heads want to explode. But my thought is, if you're not going to do that and that doesn't work for your personal needs, then it has to come back to variety while you're working it out and go and, you know, try a different, few different things pick up new skills and learn and be curious and all these other things until you get to a place where you want to be a wedding planner or do what we do with yellow tuxedo um because you're gonna you're gonna you know um it is that whole jack of all trades quote which when you when you know the end of the quote it actually makes sense um but you need to have that variety of skill set to then bring to the table for what Mm. you choose to do finally yeah definitely and you know being a wedding planner um, experiences everything because you, you know, I, no one could just. I, I'm sure someone could, but it would be very difficult for to, for someone to say, right, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna plan someone's wedding and just do it with no experience whatsoever, having not really been to you know a lot of weddings mm. or de- no, you know, knowing uh, local suppliers, your network is is almost everything, um, it, especially as I've learned in a few emergency situations that knowing people, knowing your local suppliers is is key to everything. Um, and obviously when you're new and starting out, you haven't really built up that network yet or um, the, the re- not the respect, what's the word I'm looking for? The, um, yeah, yeah. The no, it is, it is so, reputation. Sam. It is reputation. reputation. And, but that's, that's where I come back to that whole, you are the like the most likable person on the planet, is that I don't think there is anyone out there, if you were to, you personally were to call them and go, oh, I need a favour, they'll go, oh, Sam, no, not you. Unless Sorry. it's me, I'll be going, no, Sam, because we lost out at the, <laughs> the Hampshire Dawson. Wedding Supplier Awards <laughs> in 2008 or whatever it no, was. No, to so self, don't ask Alan for a favour. No, so at any time. It definitely comes down, so you, your, your network, your personality your drive and your experience and spending that quality time building because that's not happened overnight because we've known you for the best part of a decade now and that hasn't happened overnight that's yeah it's building day in day out and not forgetting where you started and 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 everyone who's helped you along the way so my next question to you sam is to go so you're in events and that's time consuming really time consuming especially in the wedding industry kind of uh, sector of events there when you know it's not just the saturday when you're doing the events if you're doing f- full-on planning as well is the the weeks and months leading up to that with, with that being on the end of a phone when they need you it's the setup with the maybe one day maybe two days before or three days depending if it's a, a larger scale outdoor event potentially that's a lot of your time and now you've already mentioned that you are uh, a young family how do you do you still perceive that in the same way as you did 10 years ago, loving the events? Or do you have that kind of um, friction now between the fact that you have the family at home as well and you actually want to be out in the field as well? I think at the moment it's OK because he's not at school yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we still do have that time in the week together. Yeah. Uh, not every day. He does go to childcare. I'm not crazy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, in a couple of years when he does start school, um, that potentially will be more of an issue because obviously he's only going to be off at the weekends. Uh, I mean, he's not going to boarding school. I mean, (laughs) but for the best part of the day, it's only the weekends that he will be at home. Um, You know, my husband now works Monday to Friday and generally a lot of my weddings are Saturdays. um, So it works for our family at the moment. But um, as I said, kind of been looking forward those couple of years going, okay, things are going to change. What do I need to change to perhaps get more balance um, and this is where Rise and Shine comes in right. um, and I've also been um, kind of recruiting some people to work with me in the weddings kind of train them up to do things the way that I do them so that they can be sent out on their own as well so South Coast Weddings will oh, I was going to say always exist that's a, bold, a big statement to make yeah. I mean yeah. <laughs> for the foreseeable <laughs> future uh, South Coast Weddings is going to exist um, anyway um, it just may not always be me you know, doing the weddings, running the weddings, especially on the day coordination, the the kind of the one, hmm. I say, I shouldn't say one day things because I was bang on about how it's not just one day, but um, <laughs> especially the on the day coordination where someone is present for that one day uh, may not always be me, but um, so I will always be involved in the wedding planning um, for mm-hmm. South Coast weddings. But going forward, um, Rise and Shine will probably take a more prominent um, position in my life, maybe. Um that's the plan. Anyway. Surely, that, sorry, yes, Adam, no, after you go. surely that's that's an exciting bit of scope there as well for your work and what you're doing because 
when you are working individually on an event, which we, you've already said it, you love it because you get to know the individual people within that uh, event itself. What you're doing with Rise and Shine and that sort of wider scope there is that you're impacting more people, but and having that useful, useful Sam being helpful Sam, but also the ability to be wider than just your geographic location as well. You know, you're you're talking the rest of the UK. You could be talking abroad, and there's quite a lot of excitement in that. Surely, with a as a project to be able to do what you love and still have that element of organization that you clearly have in abundance yeah. um but just in a different way and that's the i hate the word pivot but that's a great that's, that's a great evolution well done of of your <laughs> Liam no Neeson's. pivot is there is no pivot because a pivot would imply you're doing in stopping this one thing you're absolutely stopping that. so it's always an evolution in this world so um you yeah know. definitely and i think um i like we said everyone started somewhere and you know if we all had that one person that was going don't worry I've got you I'll help you you know what is it you're stuck with yeah. what are you what do you need help with um who can I connect you with and it's those things I think that when you're especially when you're newer business um you, you just need that helping hand go well what what should I do and we when we were all starting out we all thrown money at advertising here there and everywhere hoping that it will stick or going to shit wedding fairs sorry sorry no, you're okay, you're okay. um <laughs> then and going oh god I just wasted like eight hours of my life and there was like five people through the door you know we've all been there so just having that helping hand going I'm going to connect you with this person this person can help you talk to this person they'll tell you about their experience you know and just just it is I think it is just about connecting people um and giving them that helping hand that we you know we all perhaps could have done with when mm. we were a bit newer as well but and also existing businesses like you know we can't all pretend that because we've been in business a long time we know everything but how can that how can that be possible um and everything changes doesn't it so you know everything oh god yeah i've heard about this chip. <laughs> yeah um you know we <laughs> i love i love the background singing them uh background uh songs of my life um oh, sorry sorry did you stop you there and alan can't shush me when yesterday on a call he sang shane ward that's my sorry, goal i can shush you because i'm doing all these song lyrics that keep popping up in this episode in my head because i don't want to interrupt <laughs> sam who's mid-flow as our guest sam, you're gonna I'm have just... to uh, start playing ro- paying royalties I, know. I think it's three seconds or something like that. Oh, as long is it? As we okay. Don't, yeah. Limit to go, Sam. Seconds. Go. Um, completely lost my train of thought. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's fine, though. Uh, oh, now the dog's joined again. Um, okay. What was I saying? I can't remember. It's about, we, we, we can't all know everything all the time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, even existing businesses. Um, yeah, I think things change in the industry, you know, and having that um, that place to share knowledge uh, oh, I heard about this. What do we all think about this? You know, what are we all going to do? Um, and yeah, even uh, well-established businesses need need help as well. Mm. And just that sounding board off of other established businesses. I'm so sorry about that. No, it's okay. Um, we, the, we postman, need... the postman has decided to pick this moment. It's always helpful. It's always yeah. helpful. Thanks, Posty. Um, <laughs> yeah. Interestingly enough, because I only think this is relevant to this, that's why we exist as a business. So we're in the wedding world, as we said a thousand yeah. times. We never like semantics here we never paid for advertising but we did go to wedding fairs and as we were stood there in the rain we were like this is rubbish we need to do something else so we moved everything online we worked all that out worked it through worked very well for us and now we show other people how to achieve their own version of it you know yeah. so uh, absolutely it has to be that evolution and and it uh, and the other relevant part was the change came as our kids started school yeah and and we were like <laughs> yeah. uh, uh <laughs> and it was still okay for a bit, like dragging them out with us on a Sunday. Ours is different to yours. Yours yeah. is Saturday night. But then we were like, nah, something's got to change. So it all happened for us. And I think for us as well, there's two of us in that same business in an event where you know, you've got a really good partnership with your other half. But it is, it's the, if, if both of you were out at a wedding every single Saturday, that, that's a different environment for your child to grow up in. So yeah. it has to change and evolve. But that's also not saying that you don't ever do events again in, in person again. It's just giving yourself... And, and, or uh, award ceremonies, Emily. Or award ceremonies. <laughs> I mean, you, it's like, Lord, you can't enter. <laughs> uh, we're entering and then I'm still going to have an issue. We yeah. have, we still have the Bailey brand. We, we uh, can see our awards see there. Our They're awards right there. Right there on our, on our shelf. Uh, they, they need a bit of a dust. Two from the three years we entered. Right. Not that he's bitter. Yeah. Not that he's that bitter. I don't really mind. Of course, it's life. <laughs> no, right. no. Do you have, last last question before the last question is a quick is last question. Like penultimate. Penultimate yeah. last question. Do you have a favourite type of event that you, because you've done lots of events over the years. Have, have you got an ultimate favourite one you like to kind of 
put together. So you've got you've had event you've had like award ceremonies, you've had weddings, and you've had charitable events, all those kind of things. Is there one that really goes? Oh yeah, I could do that every day of the week. Oh, I don't know. I don't have a favorite. I think it is because because for for me, as I've said, the thing that that, that I really love is the people, yeah. and that stays the same regardless of what type of event it is. So. Um, I, I guess there's probably uh, elements of more stress with some <laughs> events than there are with others. Mm. Um, so maybe doing them every day of the week would be quite difficult. But, <laughs> um, you know, and, and with the wedding awards, it was, you know, also doing all the scripts um, for everything, seating plans, all those much more. Well, obviously you do seating plans for weddings, but um, nine times out of ten, the couple do that because I don't know their guests. <laughs> Um, I do, I have been sort of trying to promote, why don't you just do a draw, like take a draw ticket, sit with anyone. Um, I think that would be a lot easier. I'm on board with that. Not for the caterers. They would hate it because the dietary requirements obviously would be all over the place. Um, so in practical, (laughs) logical brain, yeah, practical terms, it would be a nightmare and the caterers would hate me, but I do think it would be very fun to one day just take a ticket and that's here. That's what you could could at least narrow it down by like dietary requirements. So I I nearly said, (laughs) they all have to sit together. I mean, like (laughs) non dietary requirements over here, vegans over there. And you know, there'd be a one table for the celiac and everything else. Because not in a funny way, in that I imagine they would be a minority. Um, and okay, well, but not think, think, of all, table for the yeah. Yeah. think of all the um, the East Enders moments. So she can't speak to him because that happened over there, and years ago they did that, and they don't talk. That'd be hilarious. Yes. I there was a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, right. Sam, I could chat to you for hours, and we probably will after this call is actually finished. But um, one final question up. up one we always finish with is if you were to go back to your younger self, put an arm around yourself and say something, what would that be? Oh, good question. It's probably, probably like trust your gut and, or believe in yourself more. Um, I think I probably grew up in a time where um, schools especially were never like, yes, you're going to go on and achieve amazing things and you can do anything you put your mind to. That was never, ever said at my school, I don't think once, um, you know, it, it wasn't the traditional thing to go to university at, at the school I went to. Um, so I think it, it would probably be kind of believe in yourself more and just, yeah, go for what you, what you want to do. Not that I necessarily knew what I wanted to do, but there's probably been a lot of doubt over the self doubt over the years of, yeah. Oh, am I, what am I doing? Should I, am I doing the right thing? Um, so it's probably that because I think nowadays, I think I hope that schools are very different and, and that people, kids are taught, you know, kind of, go on and do what you want to do and believe in yourself and achieve great things. And, um, but that was definitely never a thing when I was a kid. No, but your, your son has got the best role model though. Even if the school doesn't say that to him, you definitely have that to say to him as he grows up. As it's well. going to be very American. I always call it quite American because they're always telling their <laughs> kids. <laughs> but I think <laughs> positive, I re- think... positive reinforcement. We'll just say that. That's a nice, but Sam, nice I think you're in, exact, you're in exactly the right spot for where you need to be right now. And you are absolutely smashing it. And we are so privileged to have you as a friend and business colleague as well. So thank you very much for the last decade of knowing you, Sam. Other than the uh, <laughs> apart, from, <laughs> apart from not giving Alan a bit of, um, a bit of glass. Last the little clip on, on uh, an Alan's mind. No, um, I didn't mind losing. Sorry, I've got. I just feel I need to like establish what my challenge here was. I don't mind not winning. That's not the problem. It's not from Dorset. It was the fact that a company from Dorset that we'd been told was loosely connected beat a company from Hampshire at the Hampshire. It was like, sorry, what? How does that work? I, yeah, I didn't mind not winning. All I remember from that particular award ceremony, last thing before we actually say they goodbye were to fun. Everyone, the was that won. I'd given birth ten days before that. <laughs> And I was at an award ceremony going, I um, probably should be at home in bed with a baby. Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought about. Yeah, and your baby but, uh, was at home. That's impressive. Yeah, that it was the f- first time we left it, him and... Um... Impressive or questionable parenting, right? Um, I can probably uh, make your day maybe a little bit, Alan, though, by saying that that company, who I think it is, uh, aren't in business anymore. Oh, uh, nor are we. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, I mean, I can, you know, give you their award if you want. Yeah. Uh, we can't be happy about these things. We have to go. I hope everything's okay with them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> On that note, Sam, thank you very much for coming to chat today. It's been absolute joy to speak thank to you, you today. Thank you for having me. Thanks, and Sam. to anyone listening to the Digital Circus Live, please thank you so much for subscribing and listening to everything you're doing all the time. And we will see you next time. <laughs>